So we're shooting some product videos tonight. Got my buddy Kyle here with me to help out and thought we'd kind of go through some of the steps of how we're doing this tonight. And I'll take you through the edit and all that good stuff. It is late at night, so we're both tired. So we got our coffee in my Matty Hapoya mug tonight. This is our setup half torn up already because we're moving shots, but shooting with the Blackmagic 6K right here into a Samsung T5 drive. Right now we've got the Canon 100 millimeter macro on there to get some detail shots. We're doing some uh, knives, a local place here that's making these. So we've got a few different ones that we're gonna kind of theme the video for each of the three looks. So we got a blue and a black one and a camo one. Um, we've got our turntable here to spin that thing around. I'm using my TV as a background. Got my computer going to that, just streaming through the Apple TV. So we can kind of put whatever we want as the background. Works nicely. We've got the Falcon Eyes F7 that I love to put a little accent light on there. And we're even using it to do a little light movement, um, which we found is really cool for these product kind of shots. The uh, Aperture 120D up here overhead with the, actually, this is the old light dome, the light dome one. And uh, yeah, that's about it for right now. So we're gonna set up these shots as best we can. And um, these videos are always a little bit of an experiment of what we can make work and what actually looks good. So we'll find out. If nothing looks good, this will be the end of the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>All right, guys, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10, and I'm gonna focus on this camo knife that we worked with today and uh, just walk you through a couple of shots and how I edited those. Now, we did shoot this on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K. I shot it in 6K RAW, which is probably overkill. I typically just shoot these in 4K, but ended up shooting this one in 6K. So all I do with that is just drop that footage into DaVinci Resolve, make any small tweaks that I might wanna make, and then export that as ProRes video. So this first shot we have is the camo knife. We've got it on the little tiny dowel rod spinning on the turntable. So we get a nice reflection from the light on the blade. And what we have in the background is my TV background and just a um, image of a forest that I downloaded from unsplash.com, which is Definitely one of my favorite sites for getting those kind of things from. There's a lot of stuff you can do using the TV for a background. There's some, some little quirks that you have to deal with, especially in trying not to get other reflections that you don't want off of the TV. But it's super cool and super easy to be able to get a lot of different backgrounds. The last time I did a product video like this, I just used the TV as a green screen. This time I decided to go ahead and put an image on there, which in order to get this stick out of the shot now, makes this a little more difficult than just keying out the green screen. So I'm gonna walk you through what I did for this first clip. So we wanna get rid of this stick. What I am going to do first, because I wasn't smart when I was shooting and I didn't get a clean plate which if you don't know what a clean plate is, basically it would be the same shot. I would just take the knife and the stick out of the shot so I could see what's behind it. And I'd be able to use that to mask out this stick. But since I didn't do that, we're gonna take a little different approach today. So I'm just gonna go to the first frame here. I am going to save this frame as an image doesn't really matter. I'm just going to leave it as a TIFF file, um, which is the default. We're going to save that. I'm going to call it camo knife plate. And now that was saved successfully. We are going to check that out here on our desktop. I'm going to open this image up in Photoshop. 
And there we go. So we've got our image of that frame. And what we wanna do is create our clean plate. This is super easy now with the tools that Photoshop gives us. So I'm just gonna zoom in here on the stick. I'm gonna use just this lasso tool to make things a little bit easier and quicker. I'm going to select around where that stick is. And then we are going to go to edit content aware fill. And look at that automatically. It's already doing a pretty darn good job on that. So I'm just going to say apply hit. Okay. And now we have a decent clean plate without that stick. I could try to get rid of the entire knife, but I really don't need to do that for our purposes. So I am just going to export that. I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. This doesn't really matter a whole lot because our focus is going to be on the knife anyway, which is going to be our video footage. So this is at the right size, 1920 by 1080. I will just save that. Sure. We will go back into Final Cut. I'm gonna grab this plate that I just saved and bring it in here. Now we put this underneath our other footage. And of course, what we're looking at is just a still image. So you can resize this to whatever length you need. We'll make it, make it match the video clip. So nothing different, right? So now what we need to do See, when I disable this, you can see the stick goes away, but that's just our image. So what we're going to do, we're gonna make sure we're on our main video clip and we are going to go to masks, draw mask and drag that on top. So I'm gonna zoom in here to 400%, make sure I am fairly accurate with my control points. And we are just gonna mask out this stick again. So you'll need to zoom out to do this because I want to make sure to get below the frame. And we are going to go ahead. I'm just going to do four control points. That's probably all we need. And of course, look, it did nothing. It actually did something. But what we need to do is click this invert mask option. So it masks out what is inside of the mask instead of what's outside. That's looking pretty good. Now, Obviously, the video clip is moving, our mask is not. So what we wanna do is animate our mask to follow the knife properly. So we're gonna go back into this draw mask. We're gonna drop down these control points. I guess you don't have to drop them down if you don't want to. But we're gonna click the keyframe option here. Now we've created a keyframe here at the first frame where we want it to be. So now all of these, as we go through this clip and move them, it's gonna create keyframes for us. So I'm just gonna click down here. I am going to use my arrow keys to go over. Typically I go like five or six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's usually pretty good. We're, I'm gonna zoom in here again too so we can get closer detail. We don't really need to move those bottom control points um, because you know that isn't moving. But now that we're moved over six frames, we'll just grab each of these top ones, make a little adjustment. We'll go over there are 10 frames. This is a pretty smooth motion. So honestly, we could probably create like keyframes at the beginning and the end and be pretty close. But I'm going to go ahead and just do every 10 frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I know this seems like little tiny tweaks, but being precise with this makes a huge difference. We're just moving forward 10 frames at a time, adjusting these little guys. Okay, and that's pretty good. So now you see, as you move through this clip, those points are moving from our keyframes. So now when we look at this before, turn off our mask. So here's what we had before with the stick, turn our mask back on. Here's what we have now. And that can be used for 
so many different purposes, so many different uses. It is a rather tedious task. Um, so it takes a little bit of patience, a little bit of tweaking sometimes to get it just right. But for our purposes today, this little two second clip, I think we did pretty good. Let's move on to the next. So this next clip was actually the throwing of the knife. Um, we really wanted to like show this one being thrown, sticking into the side of a tree or something. Um, so we went outside, grabbed a rather soft and wet piece of wood, which allowed the knife um, to stick better in it. And of course, neither one of us, Kyle or I, um, that we're working on this are, you know, professional knife throwers or anything. So we knew we'd have some major trouble <laughs> trying to actually throw this and stick it in a tree or something. So decided we should be able to fake that pretty easily. So what we did, we took the background on the TV and flipped it 90 degrees onto its side. And we did the same thing with the camera. So basically we were getting a vertical shot. So Kyle was dropping the knife from above straight down into this. So we could essentially take that in editing, flip it sideways, and now it looks like it flies into the piece of wood. Of course, we have a quick throw of the knife here before that. Sticks into the side. Not too bad. That was actually a way easier shot to get than I expected. I thought we would have to do a lot. I think we got it on like the fourth try or so. Um, I also animated just a little bit. You can see here at the beginning, keyframes for this shot to move a little bit with the knife. Just adds to that effect a little bit. And then what I did, I added some text here. Use that same technique, as you can see, to mask out this knife from the lettering so we could put the lettering behind it. And then what we can do, since now we've got this knife flying in, text popping up, but it's kind of just a static shot at that point. So I'm gonna grab all of these and I am going to option G to turn these into a compound clip. Now, nothing has changed except those are all this one clip now. So I can take an effect. I really enjoy these effects that I got. There's an automatic zoom out that I thought I would use. So we're gonna drop that on there. Now, all of our animation, our text popping up, all of that can be easily zoomed out altogether instead of having to do them one at a time and trying to match them all up, which is usually crazy to try to do. So that's all the shots I'm gonna go over today. I know we did a lot more, but this video will end up being super duper long. So hope these couple of tips helped you in um, any product videos you might be doing or just any other videos. So comment below if you have any questions for me at all, I would love um, to answer those. And if you'd like to see any other tutorials from these specific edits, just let me know. I'm gonna go ahead and let you check out these finished products as we go. So thanks for being here. Like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. So there's where the blue goes across oh, it. Sure.